Hello! Today we are going to make Coated Dumpling and I hear you all shouting, well we've done that, why are you doing it again? Um, most of the comments below that one said, uh, fuck off Sue, I'm not going to make that Coated Dumpling because that took you five hours and I hear you, I absolutely hear you. Uh, it's come up to Christmas, coated dumplings and dumplings and Christmas puddings and stuff are all kind of, excuse me. As I was saying, it's come up to Christmas and uh, today is like the 15th of December, so coated dumplings and Christmas puddings and stuff are pretty much the same kind of thing. Um, different in ways, but they look the same, they taste similar, one's got booze, one doesn't. They're the same fucking family of dumplings is what I would say. Um, so, I have found a recipe for microwave coated dumpling and I want to try that because apparently it takes 9 minutes in the microwave um, and yeah, because it's come up to Christmas I think that it could be a good recipe to use um, quick and easy, get it on a plate, put some fucking holly on it, it's Christmas, why not? Right? That's what we're going to do today. Also, the reason we're doing that is because I have not filmed in my kitchen yet it's echoey, I don't really know where all the pogs and stuff are um, so I figured this recipe should be quick, easy, simple, short, straight to the button and we can establish at that point how we can film in here from now on where will I put the cameras, where will I put the light, all that kind of stuff so um, yeah, we'll do that, we'll try that, we'll see what happens it may be nice, it may not be, don't know, let's try Okay, so I'm trying to have you today, which is showing you the ingredients we're using and then we'll actually do the recipe. So we have 300ml of milk, I have used whole milk for that. We have brown sugar, it's soft dark brown sugar and it's 125 grams. 125 grams of boutoir. We have in here is one tablespoon of cinnamon and two tablespoons of mixed spice. This is 450 grams of dried fruit and I've got mixed dried fruit. In here is 225 grams of plain flour with one teaspoon of bicarbonate soda in the middle. Then we have two beaten eggs and that's everything that we need to make our microwave coated dumpling. Okay. So after about 45 minutes of moving the camera and the light and everything around I've established that this kitchen, albeit big, is very difficult to manoeuvre when you try to actually get a camera to see a cooker. This is the best I can get it just now, but I'll work on it. I'm sure we'll get better one day. It's fine. It's a work in progress. I'm holding a bookie slip in my hand. If you follow me on Twitter you would have seen why. Um, this bit thread slip has the recipe of the microwave dumpling on it. And on the other side, it has the four instructions of how to cook it. Now, before I go any further, I will address the fact that I am indeed wearing my pyjamas. And uh, the reason for that is, I am not here to pretend to you that I am anyone other than the kind of person that wears pyjamas most of the time. That's who I am. If that's who you are, that's good. If that's not who you are, it's also good, but I'm not here to like you. That's who I am, and I'm wearing pyjamas. So, moving on from that, let's make some dumplings. The first instructions for this basically say water, sugar, butter, cinnamon, spice and fruit in a pot, bring to boil, simmer for three minutes, then cool. So let's do that. So we have, hold on, hold on, water. Water is not part of this. Hmm. Now, it says water, does it mean milk? And it probably does. Water, sugar, butter, cinnamon, spice and fruit. Yeah, yeah, it's probably milk. If it's not milk, then it's milk now. So there's my milk. What I'll do, I'll turn the cooker on, because that would help. So I have an induction hob, which I'm not used to. The fantastic thing about induction hobs is when your cooker is on and you put anything on there, it just shouts at you, it just beeps at you forever, telling you there's something on me and I hate it. Like, I know, I put it there, stop screaming at me. Let's have a look. We want that hob. Oh, okay. There we go. So we want this hob. 
put it to seven because um, I don't understand induction hobs. They just do what they want, uh, whatever, I don't know. So we have the water, which is actually milk, the sugar, which if you have never experienced soft dark brown sugar before in your life, it has a consistency of kinetic sand and is very fun to play with, hence why there's a spoon in this, because I have been moving it around. So we'll put the sugar in there, the boutoir, we'll put the butter in as well, it says the cinnamon and the spice, so we'll put that in. There goes my cinnamon and my spice. And then it says to put in the fruit just now, but I would think that you would melt all that together first, then put the fruit in, which is exactly what I'm going to do. So, the hob looks like it's on, so that's a good start. So all I'm going to do is melt the milk, the butter and the spices together until that is one liquid, and then I'll put the currants in, and then we'll summon it because Right now, if I think if I put the currants in there, I think it'll become a big massive mess and it'll be difficult to stir, so I'm not going to do that. So the battery on this camera is about to die and I'm going to go and look for the boxes that contain the batteries for this camera. I'll be right back. Fully charged. Okay, so you have full battery life now, so I can hear it to my heart's content, constantly repeat myself and it won't run out, so that's great. Um, in my absence, this has started to melt and um, I left the room, I came back and it smells like the Christmas market. You ever go to a Christmas market? There's like one in Glasgow and there's one in Edinburgh, but I've never been to it. It's basically stalls that sell like sausages and churros and stuff, but it smells like this. What does it smell like? Which I assume is mixed spice. I don't know why I'm telling you this, but I have like the urge to like talk to you like you're a person. I have the urge to be like, here by the way. What's that all about with eye drops? We say content copy on leafy bean taken down and like talk about like uh, Tana winning that bloody streamies. But then at the same time I'm like, just shut up and make the fucking dumpling. I think people are here. But I just feel like it's bizarre. The world of YouTube is very bizarre. I'm just here making dumpling. There's chaos and fire surrounding me. It's just a bit nuts really, isn't it? I think I should do this more often. I think I should actually um, film more often because the fact I haven't filmed a video in so long means I'm actually just talking to you about like life issues. And um, that's not healthy. Anyway, the butter's melted now so I'm going to add the currants. That is an absolute ton. Like, there is so much in there. And you know, melting that and then putting it in there was the best idea ever because it, it's so easy to stir. Now, fuck me, that smells great. Right, um, oh, does it come? Get in there. Okay, so bring to the boil, then some of it. Oh, the currants are like soaking up all that sugary goodness. Telling you one thing though, right? See if this actually works and this quick dumpling is like legit, then I will be furious. I will never get back those five hours of my life. I won't lie to you, I've always known this dumpling existed, but I never wanted to try it because I just feel like, I feel like I'm a quirky dumpling elitist, right? In the sense that I don't feel like things should be modernised. I think if Suham is so old that it has tradition and it has a way of being made and there's stories and stuff behind it, especially in Scotland, I feel those things are very precious and they should be kept that way. That being said, that is me only. Only I feel this way and you may not. And because you may not, you may want a dumpling you can make in like nine minutes in the microwave. So this is why I avoided making this recipe before. And I'm really scared because it's really good. Because if it's really good, I'll never go back to making it in a pot for four hours because that's just bizarre. Why would you? So see, in stirring this now, it's actually soaked up so much butter. Like the, the dried currants are like becoming dead plump. Plump? What? Wait. Right. I'm going to leave it alone now to boil because uh, I won't boil from stirring it, but I'll show you. So this is where we are. It looks very appealing, doesn't it? But 
obviously you can see that these currents are now starting to get kind of plumped up because um, before they were just dry, they were just dried currents. Anyway, we'll leave that be for a bit. It's starting to boil now, so the next step apparently is microwave bowl wine with cling film. Smashing! And another thing is that I've taken the lens that Marcus uses off because that was so intense. Like the, the you had to be the other side of the room because it zoomed all the way in. You could see every imperfection in my face, too much there are many, and it was just too intense, it was too much. So you have back to the normal lens, but it's a normal bloody footage, it's great. I know I'm to boil this, but it didn't tell me like what the outcome is to be, but I, what I assume the outcome is to be is to reduce a lot of the liquid. So what I'm going to do is probably change hops, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to probably change hops. I feel like that hop wasn't working for me. I feel like it was too small, it was taking too long. So I'm going to use a bigger hop. Um, I'm getting really used to this uh, induction cooker. I'm not very good at it. I'm used to a gas cooker where you just control the gas and that's it. Gas is definitely the way forward, I would say. But we're here now, we have an induction cooker and we're going to deal with it. If you have tips on how to deal with unruly induction cookers, please tell me because we'll want to deal with it. Right, so I have two bowls sitting out and uh, I wasn't sure what kind of bowl I would use because I wasn't sure how much liquid there would be and how big it would be but based on that let me go with this one because if it rises then when you put it out that way it'll be a perfect kind of um, Bronson could you not like that battery pack that'd be great could you go to your bed please um, so yeah when you tip it out it'll be a perfect kind of like shape so we'll use this one so you're supposed to leave it to simmer, but I've just been, um, I don't want to leave it alone for too long. I've actually been stirring it intermittently because a little bit of it has been sticking. Um, obviously the raisins and stuff, when they start to get juicy, they'll open and then they'll stick to the bottom. So that's, just keep a wee eye on that. So we're just going to clean film this bowl. And then go through there. How does one clean film a bowl like, without it just being an absolute mess? I'm not here to lie to you again as I say, but I'm, I'm here to tell the truth and the truth is quite filming bowls is difficult because it just all pops back up again. Um, this isn't the kind of cooking show where you would just look and you know, it was a perfectly clean filming bowl. I'm going to have the same trouble as you. Yeah, that's starting to get, stick a good bit because all the raisins and stuff are starting to get really juicy so keep an eye on it. Right, I'm just going to like put this clown film around my fist and then punch it in the middle of the bowl. That worked better than I thought it was going to do. I'm just stirring this now but I'm going to show you what it looks like. So this is what it looks like now. You can see that the milk and the butter and all that has dissolved down. There is very little liquid left. It is mostly just currants. So I'm going to leave it another 30 seconds to a minute um, and then I'm going to take it off. I'm going to take it off the heat. Basically enough time to finesse this bowl full of cling film um, and then I'll take the raisins off the heat. Well I said raisins, the mixed fruit. To be honest, you could probably just grease the bowl, couldn't you? I'm going to take this off the heat now. It's been well more than three minutes but the sugar hasn't been reducing any further so I don't think it's going to. So I'm going to take it off the heat. So the next step is to wait until this mixture has cooled which right now is molten sugar, so it can take a while. Then we need to add the eggs and the flour and the carbonate soda and then cook it, and that's it. Um, if I didn't talk so much, this would be a very, very, very short video, but unfortunately I do talk quite a lot, and it's probably gonna be 45 minutes long. So yeah, I'll come back when this stuff has cooled. Okay, so we are back, we have a cooled mixture and I'm going to show you that mixture now and I'm going to tell you a secret. I am very, very impatient. Why are you focusing on my toaster? Stop that. There you go. Sorry, it was focusing on my toaster. Anyway, so I am very, very, very impatient and uh, I put this bowl into a basin of ice cold water with ice and stirred it continuously until it cooled down because 
It's like half eight at night here. Um, I've been on the go all day, moving house and unpacking and we're flipping up carpets and paving and stuff and I just can't be arsed. So this is now cool because I forced it to be cool. Um, I mean, I'm holding the bottom of it and it's, it's tepid. It's not fully cool, but it's tepid. So this is what it looks like now. Looks yummy. It just, it's, um, there's like very little liquid in it now. It's still got some money bits, but we're going to put a ton of flour in this as well, remember? So I don't want to soak it all up, but yeah. Yummy. It actually smells fucking great. Yeah, so the next step is to sieve the flour in soda and add the eggs. So let's do that. It's very satisfying to stir this, I must say. Right, here's my sieve. As I mentioned before, this is all sieved flour and then there's a little bit of bicarbonate soda in the middle of it. So, just in case you're like, where's my bicarbonate soda? It's in there. Let me do it. Yeah. So we'll add the flour first and then we'll add the eggs because um, I want to see how runny it is. It's a bit like cotty dumpling in the sense that it does take a power to stir it. I'm going to like these guys. This actually looks... Like fucking quite dumpling. Like, like look at that. How is that no quite dumpling? Like, I'm like a slash 50% annoyed, 50% impressed. Let's add our eggs and hope that my impatientness hasn't absolutely just uh, destroyed me there and meant that I end up cooking these eggs. It's not that hot to be fair. There's no way I'm going to cook the eggs. Right, so now that I've added the eggs, it's glossy and it looks like a cake mixture. So it looks more like a fruit cake mixture than anything else. Because Cody Dumpling before was like packed like a big, it was almost like a dough. Eh, like pretty much what it looked like before the eggs went in. But now that the eggs are in, it does just look like a cake mixture. Um, which you can see for yourself. It's got a drop in consistency and stuff, so yeah, it just looks like a cake. But I mean, that's it. It now just says pour it into your coin film bowl for nine minutes on full power. That has its own issues because nine minutes on full power in what wattage microwave? Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Now, I have quite a low wattage microwave because um, I went over style rather than. Uh, like what it actually does. Uh, I just wanted my kit on toast at the match because <laughs> that's the kind of person I am. So I think my, my, my uh, micro is like 750 or something. No, 700. So that's quite low. So I'm going to put mine in for like nine and a half minutes. Yeah, I'm going to do that. So let's just pour it in, I guess. This is when I find out that my bowl is not big enough, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah, that's where we are. Just gonna put it in the microwave then, see what happens. I'll see you in nine and a half minutes. Nine. Nine minutes, 30 seconds. Season. It's not done yet, but there is 1 minute and 40 seconds on the clock, or 1 minute 45 or whatever. And um, i fucking shitting myself guys. I think that's going to be gross. It smells like, it just smells like you're cooking raw flour. I won't lie. It reminds me of when you did home ekies at school, like home economics. And they taught you how to make sponge cakes in the microwave and they were ganting. That's what that smells like. So I'm really, really scared of this, I tell you. I am too scared to add the 30 seconds because I feel like that's me not doing what I'm supposed to do. So I'm going to take it out now. Oh, oh, oh. Right. Oh no, it's going to sink. Is it going to sink? It's starting to sink. It looks really wet. I actually am going to put it back in for the half extra 30 seconds. I would like to be doing a lot more than that, my god.
Now, that looks really wet. That is really wet. But microwaves obviously keep cooking stuff after it's out, so I guess we'll just leave it to sit for a while. Yeah. Yeah, let's, let's leave it for like 10 minutes. Okay, so I am back. I have put this back in the microwave for another minute and a half. Um, excuse me, good. Uh, but there's still this kind of like soggy bit in the middle. Now I've um, poked some holes in it. It is cooked under that. It's just that top bit. The more and more I microwave it, the more it's actually going to cook all of it. And I don't want to do that. So it's going to have a soggy arse, but I think the rest of it's going to be cooked. Now it is roasting. I've had a macaroni cheese break, if you want to see how I make macaroni cheese and you want me to break your heart, that will be at the end of this video. Um, be warned, if you don't want to hate me, don't look. But, now that I've had my macaroni and cheese, um, it's been 25 minutes, maybe half an hour, and it's still roasting. But I'm going to pop it out on this plate and we'll see what happens. I did that so bravely. <laughs> See, still looks pretty soggy on that side, but this side looks alright. Can you see the soggy bit? Compared to this bit. So, the way it is just now, I think I might put this back in the microwave for uh, what another minute and a half or something maybe but then in total it would be in the microwave for a very long time so in total that's nine and a half nine minutes plus a minute and a half sorry nine and a half minutes plus a minute and a half we'll do another minute and a half see what happens One minute, 23 seconds. You can see in the coin film, that was a bit that was still wet. It might just be my microwave. As I said, I did use, uh, I did get a microwave that matched everything rather than getting a microwave that was good for power. So it might just be that it's not cooking evenly. It might be that I've used too much coin film on that side. We'll see. Okay. Pretty much the same. I'm not going to microwave it anymore. I think that I'm just going to dry it out. So I'm just going to leave it how it is. And once it's cool, we'll cut it in half and see what it looks like. It smells really good. It doesn't smell as complex as an actual cloty dumpling. Uh, complex is a wanky word to use. I think it this doesn't smell as good. Um, a cloty dumpling's obviously got lots of other um, spaces and stuff in it. There's nothing stopping you from putting the same amount of spices in this, I suppose. Um, does a quality dumpling have eggs? It must do. Well, I mean, yeah, I suppose you could work on the... You could work on the spice um, mixture. You could maybe try some different sugars. Maybe put some molasses in it or something. Some treacle, maybe. Which is molasses. But yeah, it smells good. A bit wet on one side, but I mean, I'm really impatient. Will we just cut a bit of it out? Yeah. <coughs> so the wet side is here, the dry side is here, so I'm just going to cut it straight down the middle. Oh, try this way first. Okay. Came out sort of clean. seems to be wet, which is bizarre. Hmm, well that's my cross section. You can see that this stuff here does seem to be quite wet. But actually inside is fine. So I'm going to put one half on a board 
and show you the inside. So you can see from the plate, the wet bottom has stuck because that was just raw. Um, I mean, this stuff here seems to be quite dry. So, I'm not really sure. So holding it, holding it on the side here, you can see this is the side that doesn't have the wet edge and this is the side that has the wet edge. So this stuff here looks really dry, this stuff here looks soaking and raw. I don't know if you can see that there, but that is absolutely raw. So, yeah, I mean, I guess it does take much less time. I guess it's more convenient if you're really desperate for some cookie dumpling, but the results, the results are not great. And that's me cooking it well over the time. I suppose we should try some. So I only tend to eat quick dumpling with butter because why would you not put butter on something that's primarily mostly brown sugar and butter? Add more butter. So I'm going to do that. If you're Scottish and your granny does need butter things like that, is she even your granny? So I just tried a bit. It tastes okay. Does it taste like a quite dumpling? Kinda. The bit I had was really dry, but the bit I had was the only bit you could guarantee was like not raw. So it was from this side, and this is the soggy side obviously. I'll show you on this side. There it's soggy, and then if you turn it around, it starts to become cooked. So the bit I had came from here. I would say this is a fail, but part of me is glad I've done it because now I know that the traditional quality dumpling is the way forward. Does it take five hours? Absolutely. Like, is it a bit of a pain? Yeah. But does it taste better than this? 100%. 100%. And these things are so big that if you, you make them for people, you mostly make them for people. If you're making this for yourself, you've got issues, right? You make these things, you slice them up, you give them to friends and family. That's what you do. Um, if you're making a quick dumpling, make it the traditional way. I will link the video either up in the eye, whatever section it is, or at the end, the video will be there for you to watch. I've, it does take a while, but I fully recommend it. This is rubbish. I've had shop bought quality dumpling that's made in factories that is much better than this. Um, yeah, it's not great. So, yeah, this is what I'm left with. I will see what I can do to make it sort of tasty or what bits I can and can't eat. It won't go to waste anyway. So yeah, thank you so much for coming to watch this video and watch me attempts to make quickly dumpling in the microwave and not enjoy it. If you enjoyed this video please leave a like and subscribe if you want to. If you don't that's fine as well. I will not pressure you into such things. You are your own person and I believe in you. If you are interested in buying merch because yes I am wearing my own merch right now. I wasn't earlier on but it got cold and I thought well I may as well wear this hoodie of all the hoodies I own. If you're interested in this the link to my merch is also in the description as well as the ingredients and recipe for this. If you want to try this recipe and it's successful for you please 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 tell me what you did differently. Tell me the wattage of your microwave. Tell me how long you put it in for. Tell me everything I need to know. And please share it with me on Twitter because again, I'd love to see it. Any recipes that you do that you get from my videos, um, if you send me pictures of them, I always retweet them, always. So let me see them, I'd love to see them. As always, thank you so much again and I'll see you later. Bye. I'm just gonna film this for the end of the video just to piss everyone off. I'm gonna make macaroni and cheese and show you how I make it. So this is macaroni, this is salt, a bowl, a kettle, and I'm gonna put it in the microwave. I 
take the macaroni out of the microwave. I drain the macaroni from all the water. Then I add cheese. Now all I do is mix this until it melts. That is how macaroni cheese is made in this household. Voila!